and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic and our bonus content for today, and very special it is too. Um, you'll remember that Shield Beanhack has been compiling a catalogue of all our videos and the puzzles used in them. That's an amazing piece of work that he's done. It's really beautifully presented. It's available on the link under the within description under the video. Now, he's also noticed while doing that, that we've been going for exactly three years. Um, our first video was published on June the 11th, 2017. It was actually a puzzle from June the 10th, which is today, three years ago. We were doing crosswords then, and I think we did a, a couple in June together, and then we waited till August before we really got going. I think they were, I don't really remember. There were some, you know, we were trying it out for a while, had a couple of videos that we thought were good enough to go, and then uh, took a while before we really got into the swing of it and started posting regularly. So that was when it began. Now, Chiel wants to celebrate the third anniversary, which falls on the 11th tomorrow, um, which is also my wedding anniversary, and that's great. Uh, and what he's done is he's compiled three aquarium puzzles for us. Now, I'm going to have a go at two of them today, uh, the other one we'll put on Patreon. We've been getting so many people joining our Patreon site lately, um, which is fantastic. We absolutely convinced they deserve extra content. So we'll put that one there for those people who are who are paying the two or three dollars a month. Um, now, what is an aquarium puzzle and why are these relevant to our three year anniversary? Well, let me go to the grid as sent to us by Chiel, where he coloured in the um, the significant regions in the grid. So not only have you got all these threes around the outside for our third anniversary, but we've got three regions that say CTC inside, and then two that say 3Y that he's done in blue. Now, let's ignore the colouring for the moment because we'll need them to be white when we try the puzzle, which is available in a link below the video. Both the first two will be there. Now, let's check the rules. Normal aquarium rules are these. Colour the grid green and blue, so that within a region, cells that are located in the same row, within a region, cells in the same row, are either all blue or green. In a region, when a row is blue, all cells below that must be blue as well but there can be fully green or blue regions. Now, I'll show you an example of this on the grid in a moment. But for this puzzle, as well as those rules, numbers outside the grid indicate how many cells are blue in the respective row or column. Now, a couple of special bits. Greater than three may not mean a multiple of three in this case. And also, all rows and columns must contain at least one blue cell. So I suppose that means that the minus three, the, the, the less than threes cannot be zero, they must be one or two. Um, but how does the green and blue thing work? Well, the way to consider it and why it's called an aquarium is to imagine water. So if you had a blue cell here, water finds its own level. So the other two in the shape would also be blue and you could fill everything below that in the shape as blue as well, because the water would kind of fill downwards. Now above it, you don't know, they could be blue or green, but it must be at the same level. So those two could be blue or they could be green. If they were green, above them would have to be green as well because the water always finds its way to the bottom and finds its own level. So that's how an aquarium works. And let's try and remember the other rules for this puzzle as we go along. Um, and I'm gonna start it now. Let's get cracking. So there's this three pointing straight down to a run of five. Now that is useful because if there were three blue cells in this region, they'd have to fall to the bottom. So the top two must be green, and that means everything at the top of the shape must be green. Now the same is going to apply in this shape. Those three could be blue, but everything above them must be green. Um, here, even better, we've in columns one and two, we've got less than three, so only two could be blue in any one shape. So those are green, that's green, these are all green, yes. So we've got to start there from the columns. Uh, ah yes, this one as well, three, 
could be those three, but that must be green. That's all I think in the columns. Now this row, row three I've seen, that's got a three in it. And these four all have to be the same. They can't all be blue. They must be green. Oh, and the row is lovely now. It's got five spaces left and three of them are all together. So they all have to be the same. They must be the blues because at least one of them must be in it. So these other two must be green. And now above green, we can put green. Below blue, we can put blue. Um, that's not very constraining in a row with a greater than three clue. This one is a bit. So three is the maximum in column nine. And we've got one already. This can't be blue. Because if there were two blues in this shape, they'd be at the bottom. Not much more than that. Now, row two. Yeah, that's interesting. There are five cells, but these two are in the same shape. So they have to be the same. So it could be those two being blue with that one, or these two being blue with that one. Either way, that one's blue. <coughs> now, how about this row? Mm, could be those two blue or that blue. It's not quite as helpful as I wanted. Ah, oh, uh, let's swing it around. Column four has got a three. We've only got five spaces left. Now I'm not putting, thinking green this time, I'm thinking where does blue go? One of these three must be blue, and if one of them's blue, the bottom one is blue because the water always sinks. So all of those are blue. <clears throat> and that's quite limiting in column two because again, there's a maximum of two blue cells, so that one must be green, this one must be green, and therefore the other cells in its shape in that row must be green. And that is definitely useful. Now this is green. Yes, that sorts out this row. Those two are blue. This one's green. Um, okay, so that come, pulls us over. Okay, now first of all, column 10. This can't be blue anymore. Or the two ones below it would be blue and it would break clue. And even better in column 9, we can only have one more blue. So it's not there. It's not there, so I can make that green too. And it's not there. And now that's in the same shape as this, so that's green. We've got three blue in the top row, so that's there. This is therefore green. Uh, two more in row two. Oh, I still don't know whether it's those or those two. And these clues aren't so helpful up here. Ah, okay, that's interesting. Now where do we find something? More than three in this row, but not all six? More than three. Oh no, we've got one already. I was just about to make all of those blue, but I can't do that. Um, ah, row six though. There are six... No, there are seven cells. That's not as good either. What am I missing then? One, two, only one more in column nine. I don't know which one. Three in this row has to be two of one of them and one from one. Ah, three, yes, okay. Three down column five. We've got one now, so maximum of two in any shape. So that's green, that does help in this row where we've now got six cells left, but three are in a run. So, <laughs> oh, look at that. If this was blue, then these two would have to be blue. And that would fill this shape over here with blue. And now that would break column nine. That's beautiful. So this is green. And that means the three blues are here. And that means those are green. And above that green, I can put a green. Oh, yeah, now remember the extra rule. One of this column has to be blue, at least. The column one I'm looking at. And if there's blue in this shape, it has to fall to the bottom, at least. So that's blue. Now, I don't know what that is, but it'll go along with those. Oh, yes, I do. Look, this blue has to fill down. So it's filling up that whole C shape. And now we've got the three in row nine, and it's really all coming together now. This hasn't been too bad, but I'm kind of sounding like I'm finished. I'm not finished. 
three in column four, so that's blue. And the others join it. Now, oh yeah, now remember the other special rule, more than three in row five, but not a multiple of three, so not those two, so they're green. Um, three, no, less than three in column two, so that's green. Exactly three in this row, We've got one, we've got to do two more. It's got to be those two. So that's green and the one above it. So the whole T is green and the C is blue and the other C is a mixture. That's nice, symmetry wise. I don't know, it just appeals to me. Now three in column nine, brilliant. We've got them all done already. So they're all green. Uh, no, that one and that one are in the same shapes as greens. Three in the final column. That's making those two blue. Uh-oh. Something's gone wrong because that's four blue in the row. Ah, what have I done wrong? Let's go back. Is this rescuable? What have I done wrong? I thought everything I'd done was rock solid, but how far do I have to go back to find what I've done wrong here? Ah, oh, now did I make that blue when it couldn't be, when it had to be green? I don't know. Let's go with blue again there. That should be green now, so it's not a multiple. No, I don't think that affected anything I was doing. Now, how did I work it? I decided that these three here... I'm not sure. What did I decide after at this point? Two blue there. Still don't know at the top. Green, that could be blue. Yeah, they, those could be blue. Two, that can't be blue. Because in this row, blue is that one and two others. So that's green. Oh, I hate having to unwind mistakes. Now, three down here. So one of them must be in those two. That must be blue. Um, okay, I think I'm still alive at this point, but I don't know what I did wrong. Sorry about that. I did decide that this green was all, this T was all green, but I'm not sure that's right. These two could be blue now, as far as I can see. So, one, five, either both of those or neither of them in that column because of the special rule. Those columns aren't very helpful. This is two plus one more, but I don't know where that is. Right, three in row nine. This is where I started breaking, so that's green. Three in column 10, so that's blue. So that's blue. That's done all our blues in column nine. So we can make everything else there green. That's green as well now in the Y shape. Those must be blue. Now this is working better. Now, two already, ah oh yes, remember the special rule. Two blue and four blue is six blue, but we can't have six because that would be a multiple of three. So that is blue, they're all blue down there. Uh, and now that's done our three for column five and we've somehow rescued the error. That must be green and the two there blue. And we've got the three down there, so that's green. So forgive me for the mistake. Luckily, it was quite late where I got to. And I was able to unwind it. Um, I don't know what I did wrong, but you were probably screaming at me when I did it because you are smarter than I am, and that's fine. So that is Chiel's first puzzle. And a <laughs> nice one it is too. Now let's have the rules for his second puzzle, which I'm gonna do as well, which will also be on a link under the video. And they say, so remember that these original, the normal aquarium rules apply, but this time the numbers outside the grid mean something else. A clue N outside the grid means a change of color must occur after the nth cell in that row or column seen from that direction. So I guess for this one, there must be a change of color after the first cell in that, in that column going that way. Zeros are cosmetic and do not mean anything. Ah, okay. Well, cosmetic how? 
um, because around the outside, lovely, we've got 11th of the 6th, 17. So 11th of June, 2017, when we first posted a video, and down the side, 11th of June, 2020, which is tomorrow as I'm recording this, probably today when you're watching it. Um, fantastic. That's really clever. As well as that, we've got a CTC in blue and HBD for happy birthday in yellow. I mean, that's really nice compiling, isn't it? Those dates, those letters. So a couple of other bits of cluing. Um, regions entirely surrounded by cells of one color must be the other color. Every row and column must contain at least one green cell this time, not one blue cell. Okay, fair enough. Let's have a look at the puzzle, which is here. And let's get cracking with this one. So the clues are much less helpful in my view here. The zeros don't mean, okay, but seven, ah, seven. Yeah, I know that is interesting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. After the seventh cell, there's a color change. So green's always above blue, so that's green, and everything below it in this shape is blue. Brilliant. Okay, well that seven was beautifully helpful, so I shall not criticize the help. Now six there, so these two are different from each other. Ah, six here, so this cell is different from this one. So these are green, and with green we get to green everything above it. So that's perfect. As long as I've done this right, we've got a heck of a start there. Now, six there, that's useful. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's these two are different from the one above it, which must be green. So those are green. I remember I just worked out that these are different because of that six clue. So they're blue and I can fill in all of them. Okay, well, either I've just got very lucky with the starting point here, or this is a bit of an easier puzzle after all. Um, now, six at the bottom again, one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, okay, that's that would have been separate anyway, because there was this extra rule that um, places surrounded by one color must be the other color. Um, okay, so have I done all the sixes and seven clues, which seemed very useful indeed. Got lucky with them. Right, green here. And that's a one clue, so that's blue, and at its level, that must be blue. I don't think there's any rule about blues having to meet, so I'm not going to assume that that's the case. Ooh, that's different from that. Ah, these two one clues say that this region's green, okay. But none of these clues that are left stretch very far at all into the grid. Ooh. Now these ones, so those are different from those. I oh, know, but they can't be. Because these are different from each other because of these ones. What? Oh, these don't have to be the same. I think I've just worked out that these two cells are different. Because these two are different because of those clues. And each of these is different from the one on the left. So they must be different. So that must be green and these must be blue. Yeah, that definitely holds together. And these are different, so they're blue. These are different from the one on the left, so they're green. We don't get any cell counts. I have to keep trying to remember that. So still don't know what these differences are. Ah, yes, I do. One in row three here means these are green. And anything above green is green. And there is a difference between those two. So these are all blue. Excellent. Now these cells, no, no clue reaches them, but they obey this rule. They're all surrounded in one region by a different color. So they're green. I think that was the clue. That I mean, that was the rule, like that was, as I understood it. Um, now, Ah, oh, two here, that's the one. So that's green, this must be blue. And everything below it or at its level in that region is blue. Um, 
Oh, and the other special rule, there must be green in every region, and that will decide the last bit. So these have to be green, so everything above them is green. This was an easier puzzle, as long as you remember all the rules and you attack it the right bit at a time. Those two are blue, not just because they're surrounded by the sea, but because of this two clue. And that is the second Happy Birthday Cracking the Cryptic Puzzle by Chiel Bean Hacker. Thank you so much for those, Chiel. Those are fun. I mean, I like this style. Um, I should probably have watched Simon's Aquarium video a bit more closely when uh, he did it. But that was enjoyable. And as I say, the third of Chiel's puzzles will be on Patreon for those people who are paying. Thank you very much for watching. And um, thanks to those who have offered their congratulations for our third anniversary. Um, things have grown so dramatically especially in the last year, that it's hard to recognise the channel, certainly. And I uh, hope to see you again next time. So goodbye for now. Bye.